Welcome to my shop. My name is Rachel Gingell. Today I'm going to rebuild this Marvel Shoveler carburetor off of the Ford tractor behind me. If you need to rebuild your carburetor, go ahead and follow along with me. Before I pull the two halves of my carburetor apart, I want to remove this main needle as it goes all the way down into the bowl and I don't want to bend it when I take my uh, carburetor apart. So I'm just going to pull that off. You can see that there's a little spring behind it. Now in my hands is a small bowl Marvel Shoveler carburetor off of the Ford 800 behind me. Typically a Ford 800 would have a bigger carburetor like this one, um, but this tractor's had a swapped carburetor which is entirely common. That's why it's important for you to read the ID tag on your carburetor before you order parts for your carburetor. Those, these are so commonly swapped. So you can't just say, I have a Ford 800, it should have the big bowl carburetor because it might be swapped like mine has been. You should look for a tag on your carburetor. It'll be a brass tag, looks like this. It'll start out with the letters TSX and then be followed by three numbers. Sometimes a tag is located in a different location like this carburetor, this one's off a of Jubilee, and the tag here is circle on the bowl. Either tag is what you're looking for and it'll help you identify what carburetor you have so that you can get the right parts. These carburetors, Marvel Shovelers, are found on NAA Jubilee 600, 700, 800, 900 Fords, as well as 2,000 and 4,000 tractors with the early um, four-cylinder gas engine. Some of those tractors do have a um, Zenith carburetor, and if yours has been replaced with an aftermarket Zenith, then this technique won't apply. But as long as you have a Marvel Shoveler, you can follow along. Small bowl, big bowl, it doesn't matter. They're the same, just different sizes. I just pulled my sediment bowl off here. Notice that there's a little gasket here, and then there should also be a gasket on this end. There is, underneath my bolt. Sometimes this will be um, an acorn nut on the end, like this one but it comes off in the same style. Be careful because this bolt that's through here is hollow, so you don't want to torque on it too hard and break it. The sediment bowl on this carburetor appears to be in good condition. Sometimes sediment bowls leak. If you have an original style sediment bowl like this one, you could take this apart. You can just screw off this on the bottom. This bale comes to the side and it removes the bowl here at the bottom. You can purchase a new screen and gasket, clean out the bowl and reassemble it or you can purchase a brand new sediment bowl if you want to. New ones are a longer style like this. They still accomplish the same task, they just look a little bit different. So you have those two options on your sediment bowl once you take it off. Let's go back to the carburetor here. I have all four of my perimeter screws removed, so then it will just pop apart. I'm being careful here as this all comes together. My Venturi came a little bit loose there, but you can see the float inside. I'm going to take this pin out with a pair of needle nose pliers and remove the float so that I can set this down on my bench to continue disassembling. I'm going to speed up the rest of my disassembly. On the bottom here, I have a needle and seat. I like to use a long scraper like this one to get the seat out. I'm gonna flip that over and then up here at the throttle, these two screws will come out. I'll pull out the plate and then the shaft will come out the side and I'll also take out my idle adjustment here. And the bottom, I will use a deep well socket to take out this emulsion tube um, and follow that same step here on the choke door. And also in the top, there is one little jet there, which I'll take out as well.
you're ready to rebuild your own carburetor, you're going to need a kit. When you go to my website to look at the kits, there's a few different choices. So I wanna walk you through the different grades of kits that we offer so that you know exactly which kit is gonna be the best choice for you. First, we have a comprehensive kit. That's the one that I use on video today. This is our most premium kit and the best option for you. It comes with new screws for your perimeter, both throttle and choke doors, as well as the throttle and choke shafts, the external spring for your choke shaft, new drain plug, uh, emulsion tube, gaskets, needle and seat, of course, as well as a new main needle and idle needle. If you want to do a really thorough job on your carburetor, then this comprehensive kit is the one that you'll choose. The next jump down is what we call a complete kit. This as well is a really good kit. You still get new choke and throttle shafts as well as both of your needles and your emulsion tube, the spring for the outside, needle seat and gaskets. This kit will still do a very thorough job on your carburetor. If your carburetor is in good condition, you just wanna give it a little freshen up, uh, clean it, then you would choose either the basic or the economy kit, which I have shown here. The difference between these two kits is just the um, throttle shaft included in one and not in the other. They're very close in price, so um, I would recommend just purchasing the one that comes with the throttle shaft since the price is so close on them. My last choice here is just a gasket set. This is just like it sounds, it's only gaskets. Really the only reason why you'd wanna purchase this is if you're choosing a higher level carburetor kit and you're new to carburetor rebuilding and there's a chance that you're gonna put your carburetor together and you're gonna pull it back apart a second time and you wanna have those gaskets ready um, just to save yourself from a second shipment. That's really the only reason why you'd wanna do uh, gaskets only. If you're gonna clean it, you wanna put a new needle and seat in which would be a basic or economy kit. So those are the different choices. I hope that helps you understand what the different levels are. You can see laid out in front of me, I have a mixture of both the big kits and the small kits depending on the size of your carburetor, but these grades and levels of kits are the exact same for um, the large carburetor and the smaller carburetor. Other options available to you are the float. Again, we have a large and small float, so these are sold according to the ID number of your carburetor. Sediment bowl is sold separately or just a gasket and screen kit available in different sizes depending on what size your sediment bowl is. This fuel line is available specific to different models. So if you need a new fuel line, consider purchasing this one that's already bent to shape. You don't have to try to make one yourself. And then the last option would be a new um, tube for the end of your carburetor to your air. So all of these parts are available on my website. It's farmtractorrepair.com. I totally realize that you can buy Ford carburetor kits a lot of places. But I ask that you give the business to my site. When you purchase on my site, it encourages me and helps to fund future tractor tutorials so that we can keep making uh, tutorials for you to help you keep your tractor running strong. So my site is farmtractorrepair.com. I sandblasted my carburetor. You can choose to do that if you'd like to. Some people don't like to sandblast. If you don't want to, then don't sandblast. But either way, make sure that you get your carburetor very clean. I, after I sandblasted, I followed with carb cleaner. I use this kind with a straw so that I can clean all of the passageways to make sure that they are thoroughly clean before I reassemble. I sprayed with the carb cleaner, followed with a blow off nozzle, and then sprayed with the cleaner and used the blow off nozzle a second time to make sure that it's very clean before I start reassembling this carburetor. Also, you can see that I opened up my comprehensive carburetor kit and I put all of the pieces into this magnetic tray. There's a lot of little pieces in a comprehensive kit that tend to roll away. So I like to put them in this bowl so that they stay put and I don't lose any of the pieces from the kit. My next step is to take the packing out here at both the throttle shaft and the choke shaft in the bowl of the carburetor. First, there is a plug on this end. I'm gonna set this down and use a screwdriver through the um, part where the shaft goes. And then I'm going to just tap it out here with a hammer and it should come right out. So there's my old um, plug. Oops, I just dropped it. There's the old plug. It gets damaged coming out, that's okay because we have a brand new one from the kit that's gonna go in. On the other side here, we have a packing. Sometimes this is a little more difficult to get out. I like to use a screwdriver to just kind of pry it out. I'm gonna try to just get underneath it with the screwdriver and pull it out. You can see that there's both this little brass piece and then there's a little bit of rubber behind it. Looks like there's still a little bit of that gasket, the rubber gasket behind there. So let me, yep, pull that out. 
Okay, that looks clean. And then I'm just gonna follow with a wire brush like this one. Push that through there so that I can make sure that that portion is very clean. And I'll follow with those same steps down here at the um, choke. Let me show you how to put a new packing in. This rubber packing goes up here at the throttle and there's a felt packing in your kit that goes for the choke shaft. So I'm gonna put this in, in this direction. It is directional. So I'm just gonna set that in there all the way down. And then there's two pieces like this that come in your kit. The bigger one goes up here at the throttle. And then I just rest it on there. I went over to my socket drawer with this piece and picked a socket that is appropriately sized to help me drive this in. So you can see that once I put the socket on top of there, <laughs> it's gonna hold it in. It's hard to do with just two hands. I almost need a buddy for this. And then I'm gonna tap it in with the hammer until it rests and is flush. I'll follow the same steps on the other side with the uh, plug and on the choke. After I got it started with the socket, I just finished off until it was flush with this hammer. If you don't have a socket that's the right size, you can probably just use a hammer directly on there. You don't necessarily need the socket if you don't have one. Make sure that you do that for both your throttle and your choke, and then you'll be ready to put your new choke and throttle shafts in. I'm putting a little bit of WD-40 onto the shaft just so that it moves freely, and then I slide it in here. Notice how I have mine uh, situated. You want yours to be in the same direction. I did pull out my idle stop screw and put the spring on it so that that's ready to go. Here I have my butterfly. Notice that there's a number on it. The number goes up and it faces that way the way that I um, with the way that I have my carburetor orientated. I am going to set this on the shaft and I'm trying to line up the holes on the shaft with the holes on the plate. It's got to be lined up perfectly, just like that. And then I have my screw onto a self-starting screwdriver. If you have a self-starting screwdriver, it will probably really help you with this since these screws are so small and you're kind of starting them on an angle. Uh, it can be a little bit tricky to get them started. I'm going to put the second one in there. I think I got both of mine started, so I'm just going to tighten them up here. Oops, just a little bit more on this front one. My Throttle shaft moves freely within the carburetor. Yours should as well. If it doesn't, it means that you probably damaged that packing a little bit when you're driving it in. So just make sure you have that opened up and make sure that your shaft um, moves freely back and forth. The next step will be to set your um, idle adjustment screw right here. You can see that I have mine started and you just use a screwdriver to screw this in. The tip of the screw is going to touch this peg at the bottom. And then once it does, I'm gonna keep turning this just until we see a little bit of gap on the butterfly here. Move it just a little bit more until that cracks. This is an adjustment that we're going to, just right there, I saw a little bit of gap there. This is an adjustment that we're going to fine tune once it's on the tractor, but setting it this far is a good place to start while we're here on the bench. The next step is to put this little jet in there. You want to screw it all the way down. Make sure that it's tight, but don't overly tighten it. And then you are ready to put your gasket and venturi in place. These gaskets fit around the venturi a little on the tight side, so just work with it. It's tight so that it has a really um, good seal down in there, okay? This is the right time to put the gasket on. Don't forget it. It's easy to move on and get all your pieces together and then um, you remember the gasket when you put your two halves together and it's too late. Next I have my seat here and that has a small gasket on the end of it. I put a little bit of WD-40 on there just so it doesn't go in there dry. I'm going to tighten this up with my fingers as much as I can and then I'll finish off with this scraper. After I have this tight, I'm going to drop the needle into place and I am choosing to put a new float on my carburetor. Not everyone puts a new float in the carburetor when they rebuild it. However, the floats for these carburetors are, the floats are super affordable and um, they, 
those can be problematic. If your old flow is corroded or if it's dented, then you definitely want to put um, a new flow in your carburetor. There is a little clip right here that the needle will rest on. You can see that I clipped it around my float like that. And then I'm gonna put my needle into place. It just kind of, there's a groove on the top of the needle that that hangs on. Then I'm gonna hold it with this other finger, set it down into the seat like that. And then this pin for my float will slide all the way across in the place. Looks like I'm hung up on the end there. Let me use a pair of needle nose pliers to push that in all the way. After that, I'm gonna set my float into place. I wanna make sure that the pontoons are straight across. They aren't bent at all. So I'm just gonna do a little inspection here. If you do decide that your pontoons are bent, you can move them ever so slightly right here at the joint. Usually they're just fine to install, just like that. So with these pieces into place, we are done with the top of the carburetor. Your choke shaft has a little spring like this. These springs get broken all the time. If you want a new one, you need to purchase at least a complete kit. Also the comprehensive kit, of course, will have it in it. You put the round part over the round peg. That's easy. Then once you slide this in, you catch the um, square tab onto the end of your shaft here, and then you pull it out just enough so that you can bring it over the peg and then you push it in so it rests like that, okay? That's difficult for some people to get that orientation right. Hopefully that video will help you get your spring in the correct configuration. Once you have it correct, then you're ready to flip this over and put the door inside. Your new door has this um, air passageway spring set up here. If you had an original door, it might have been solid, but this is an upgraded choice. This is directional. So I have my carburetor sitting up like this with the bowl down and it's gonna slide in just like this. On the choke shaft, there's a slit and this plate goes through the slit. So I'm going to pick this up. I'm gonna drop it through the slit and then I'll turn it up. And when I do, once I have this orientated correctly, I turn that up, I can hold it in place. And from here, I put both of my screws through the shaft to hold that plate onto the shaft. With a little bit of lube on my emulsion tube, I'm ready to drop that into place. There is a gasket for this tube and you need to make sure that you get your gasket in there. Again, you can use a deep well socket to tighten it up. This is hollow, so do not overly tighten it. You can snap it off. That does it for the, this end of the carburetor. So at this point, I'm going to flip it over and I'm gonna be careful of that emulsion tube. It'll rest on that, so I'm just gonna hold it. I have this little plug here, and then I have my drain plug that goes in on the bottom. Once I have these two pieces into my carburetor, I am ready to put my two halves together. Now I'm ready to drop my main needle into the carburetor since I have my two halves assembled. You'll notice that there is one longer perimeter screw and that goes right here in the back. I'm going to uh, screw my needle in all the way until it bottoms out and then I'll turn it back out two turns. So that's all the way with the um, head facing right here. That's one turn and then a second turn. That's just a good adjustment to start with. Next, I have my idle needle. I did have a gasket on my main needle, but there's no gasket for the idle needle here. So I'm gonna screw this one down all the way, and this one, once it bottoms out, I'm just gonna come back out only one turn. You can see that I have all the remains of my old gasket cleaned off the top of the carburetor, same on the tractor, so that when I put this back onto the tractor, I'll get a really good seal and not have any complications from old gasket remains. There's where it bottoms out. And then I'm gonna come back out one full turn, just like that. Notice on the bottom of your carburetor, there's a casting number here that's not the ID number that you need. I did, forgot to mention that earlier, but sometimes people will look for a number and that's the one they see and it's just confusing. Next, I'm gonna talk about, about the sediment bowl. I am choosing to put a brand new sediment bowl onto my carburetor. 
the um, direction uh, for the fuel line is important. So look at your tractor and see how it is configured for the fuel line. Then I'm going, I have a gasket that's gonna slide through here and another gasket I already had on my um, hollow bolt. And then that's just gonna slide through and I'm going to tighten it up. Remember, you don't have to put a new sediment bolt on if you don't want to, but you probably definitely wanna get a new gasket seal kit if you're using the original style sediment bowl. Uh, those gasket seal kits are sold in two different sizes, so you might need to measure your bowl to make sure that you get the right size um, seal for your sediment bowl. I'm gonna tighten this up, but not overly tighten it again because it is hollow. And then with that, I am ready to put this onto the tractor. You should check your carburetor at both a high speed and at an idle. If there's too much flutter in the idle, you can make an adjustment right here on the idle screw. Or if it's not, it's running too rich at a high speed, then you can make an adjustment here. Those two adjustments are really the only two that you'll need to make. And you can play with them just a quarter or a half turn at a time as a little bit makes a big difference on the carburetor. I hope that this tutorial is helpful to you and that your tractor is running so much better once you rebuild the carburetor. Before I started, I had to pull the choke out and run with the tractor at about half choke. Now it runs without the choke at all. Make these improvements to your tractor and you will notice a big difference in the way that it runs. When you are ready to purchase parts, please do so on my website, which is farmtractorrepair.com. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you get a notification whenever we release a new video.